All right. Um, so good morning. My name is Heather Long and I'm the Director of Family Support Services here at the Arc of San Antonio and I want to welcome you. Um, we're really uh, happy that you joined us this morning. Um, today our presentation, Your Vote Counts, Know Your Rights, um, we realized we needed to bring this to folks because normal voting procedures are different for folks um, considering uh, the situation we're in with COVID. And so um, our hope today is that the presenter uh, will help you and offer a different safety access to the polls. We just wanna make sure that everybody's safe when they're voting. And we wanna uh, uh, just thank uh, the person um, that is gonna be presenting today, Molly. Um, and we also wanna thank our local intellectual and developmental disability authority, ACOG. Um, ACOG uh, sponsored uh, the presentation for today, so we thank you. Um, just some of the basic housekeeping. We've muted everybody and the videos are off for the webinar. Um, if you do have any questions throughout the, the presentation, go ahead and put them in the Q&A. And at the end of the presentation, we will address um, your questions. We're gonna record the session um, that way, if uh, there's anybody that um, was un unable to join us, they can go back and listen to the presentation. Um, and we will send you also a link to the presentation and the PowerPoint. So again, I just wanna thank Molly Broadway for joining us today. She is with the Disability Rights Texas, and she's a training and technical support specialist. Uh, she's a mastered social worker, licensed master social worker. Um, she's had experience working at Goodwill. Um, she, uh, some of her experience includes supervision, case management. She enjoys public speaking and working with a diverse client base. And she is currently the voting training and technical support specialist with disability rights. Um, Molly also volunteers with a disability mentoring day planning committee. And she's also a uh, part of the Social Service Case Manager Network and the Ready by 21 subcommittee. She's a participant on that. And that's a youth aging out of foster care. So that being said, I wanna thank Molly for being with us today. And I'll go ahead and turn the presentation over to you. All right. Well, thank you, um, Heather. That was, makes me sound so fancy. <laughs> um, I'm just a gal trying to get her, fake, her foot in this world ready. Um, so yes, thank you. I was asked to come speak today and discuss um, voting rights, uh, specifically geared towards people with disabilities and um, the types of accommodations that can be received. And also just, I think in this new kind of pandemic world we live in, how that affects everything. So um, like Heather said, if you have any questions, um, as we go along, please feel free to put them in the chat box and we can address them um, hopefully all at the same time. But write them down so you don't forget. So voting, that's us. Um, let's see what if we can get this going. So we always like to start off with, you know, they say start off with a fancy quote. So here's one for you. Um, it says, people often say that in a democracy, decisions are made by a majority of the people. Of course, that is not true. Decisions are made by a majority of those who make themselves heard and who vote. A very different thing. And I think that um, it's, I think it's apropos in fitting that we are having this presentation on the second day of early voting. Um, if, if you've been watching the news um, or if you voted already, good job. Um, but you'll see that in the state of Texas, we are hitting record numbers of voter turnout, which is way, way, way exciting to me. Um, and I think it's great. I was telling someone, you always hear about the number of people uh, who are registered to vote but don't vote. And I think now during this election, we're getting to see all of the people who are registered to vote um, and they're actually voting. So this is amazing. But remember, you can, um, you know, wish all you want, but unless you go out and do something about it, it's not going to happen. So uh, go vote if you've gained nothing else from this presentation today. So, um, Sometimes uh, when I do these presentations, everybody, not everybody in the audience is aware of who Disability Rights Texas is, um, who I am, which is fine um, and should be expected. And then also how we tie into the world of voting. 
So if you're not familiar with Disability Rights Texas, um, we are the protection and advocacy agency for the state of Texas. Every state in the US has a protection advocacy agency and we basically, we exist to help protect the civil rights of people with disabilities. Um, so um, voting is um, a civil right and so we work on that as well. We received federal funding from the Help America Vote Act to ensure that uh, Texans with disabilities have full inclusion in the voting process, which means you have the right to cast a private and independent ballot, um, and you have the right to vote in person at the polling site if you would like to do that, or you have the right to ask for a ballot by mail if you'd like to do that. Uh, what my job entails is part of it is talking to everybody here um, and individuals throughout the state of Texas about what their voting rights are, the types of accommodations they can receive, um, and I also work with polling uh, or election officials in each county, making sure that they're doing what they need to to best serve voters with disabilities. We train the election workers if they ask us to. Um, I will inspect polling sites to make sure they're ADA compliant. Uh, we also provide um, insight to um, legislators if they're asking us about um, voting specific policies that they may be passing. Um, or trying to pass. And then also we have a voter rights hotline, which is open year round, but it's especially popular on times like this. Um, and that hotline exists to answer any questions individuals have about what their voting rights are, um, how their disability may or may not affect uh, their ability to vote. And then also um, if people are feeling as though they are not able to vote because of their disability status um, or their experiencing problems when trying to go vote, they contact us and we try to solve that problem in as much real time as possible. So um, there's my, my soapbox for what we do here. So who can vote? That's always the, that's always the first step of figuring things out. Um, how one is eligible to vote is you must be a U.S. citizen. You have to be a resident of the county that you're applying to vote in. So like if I, so I live in Hayes County, so if I wanted to vote, I needed to, I need to apply for, I need to do a voter registration in Hayes County and not like Bear County. That would kind of be useless because I don't live there. Um, so you have to be a resident in the county you're applying for. You have to be 18 years of age or older uh, and you have to not be serving a sentence for a felony conviction. So you can have a felony conviction and be considered what's called off paper. So you will have served your sentence, done your time, paid your fees, your probation and parole fees, and you're, you've paid your debt to society and you're, you're free and clear. Um, you can then, after that's done, you can then reapply to vote. Um, but as um, long as you're not serving a sentence for it, for the felony conviction, you can vote. If you're still serving that sentence, you cannot vote yet. Uh, the other eligibility requirement is to not be declared mentally incompetent excuse me, mentally incapacitated by a court of law without the right to vote. So basically, um, if, you have guard, if you have a guardian, um, the only person that can say you cannot vote is the judge when your uh, guardianship hearing is coming up. And so let's say I have a guardian and my Aunt Mary is my guardian and um, she says, you know what, Molly, uh, we've been talking about voting and I'm just not really convinced that um, you're capable of doing that or I don't like the decisions that you're, the people, the things you're gonna vote for. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that you shouldn't vote. Uh, my aunt does not have the right to say that. Um, the only person that can say I can or cannot vote is the judge. Um, and so if you're not sure about that, um, we let us know and maybe we can review your guardianship papers to see um, what it states. Usually, if I would, it's safe to assume that people under guardianship can vote unless otherwise stated. So there you go. And I, this slide kind of talks about it a little more in depth. Um, it says who can vote, eligibility and guardianship. It says guardians, family members, service providers cannot decide that. So it basically tells you what I already said but they cannot decide that a person lacks the competence to vote. So that has to be determined by court. Again, the only person who gets to decide that is the court and the judge. If a person is eligible to vote, um, so they meet all the eligibility requirements and they show an interest in voting, 
um, and can communicate a preference of how they would like to vote, they should be allowed to do so. If you find that you are in a guardianship and your right to vote is not allowed, but you would like to vote, you can contact Disability Rights Texas and we'll see what we can do to help you modify that. So uh, you're eligible to vote. What next? So you will need to register to vote. And um, there's a couple ways to do that, but it all boils down to the fact that you will have to sign your name on a paper application and it will need to be turned in. Um, what you cannot do is you cannot register to vote online and um, or over the phone. So just a heads up about that. Um, you'll need to fill out um, a voter registration form and you can get those at a post office, libraries, your county tax assessor's office, uh, the um, DPS office or where you get your driver's license, motor vehicles office, health and human services offices, um, local mental health authorities, a lot of options. So if, or you can call your county elections office. So if you are wanting to register to vote, um, you can go to any of these places and ask for a voter registration card, or you can contact the um, voter rights hotline and we'll, we'll see what we can do to send you one. Um, there is a website address at the bottom of the slide that discusses, or it provides a link of where to go to download your own voter registration card. Um, and you have to print it out, sign it. You have to fill it out, print it out, sign it, and then send it into the mail. Um, so there's that, the website link, um, if it would be good for me to spell it out to folks, is www.sos.state.tx.us forward slash elections forward slash voter forward slash county dot shtml. Um, so <laughs> that may need to be repeated, which is cool, um, but there it is. And then also keep in mind, um, if you, let's say you've registered to vote, but you have moved a couple times since you last, since you signed up originally, you need to change your address. So you'll need to do a change of address, um, re-registration basically. So you take the same card, you take the same registration card and you just check the change of address form and you put in your new address. That way um, you can go, so say if you move counties, say I used to live in Hayes County, but I'm gonna move to Bear County. I need to do a change of address on my voter registration so I can vote in the races that I want to vote in and then I can go somewhere in San Antonio and vote and I won't be turned away. So um, you're signed up to vote. Um, also know that when you get your, when you turn in your registration application, um, it I think will take somewhere around like 30 days to receive your voter registration card. So just a heads up about that. Um, but know that your voter registration card is not the end-all be-all of, of uh, ways to verify that you are registered to vote. In the state of Texas, um, you, it has been approved to show seven forms of ID uh, to prove that you are who you say you are. So these are the seven forms of ID that must be shown if you want to vote. And that is a Texas driver's license issued by Texas DPS, um, a Texas election ID card, which looks pretty similar to a state ID, but has election ID written on top of it. A, a uh, state of Texas personal ID card um, and the, a Texas gun license, a US military uh, identification card, a US passport with your photo on it, um, or a US citizenship certificate. So those are the seven forms of ID that you can bring when you go vote. Um, there is a disability exemption from having an ID um, and I can provide more, I can provide some handouts to you on that, um, which provides more in-depth explanation as to what that is and how one is eligible for that. But there is that. Um, so say you don't have any of those forms of ID, um, there's another option as well. There are alternative forms of ID. And so if you don't have any of the seven forms of ID we spoke about earlier, the driver's license, the ID, the election ID, the US passport, the gun handler's license or the concealed gun hand license, uh, the US passport, military ID card, we don't have any of that, 
you can use um, your voter, one of the things you can use is your voter registration card. So, or you could also use a certified birth certificate, a paycheck which shows your name and address on there, um, any kind of government document with your name and address, a bank statement, a current utility bill, or like, um, like a social security check, if you get that. Um, so you can use any of those forms of ID, alternative forms of ID, to prove that you, to prove your identity. Um, but know that if you show this alternative form of identification, you have to fill out what's called a reasonable impediment declaration. And that's basically another sheet of paper that says, um, you know, I, I am who I am. So I am Molly Broadway. I'm not saying, I'm not trying to be her and I'm not actually her. Um, so I am Molly Broadway and this is why I don't have one of the seven approved forms of ID and you can, can check a box um, or you can check other and then I then you sign the form um, and then you're able to go cast your ballot. So there's that. Accessibility options um, for voters with disabilities. There's a lot of them. Um, there's a couple different ways to cast your ballot. You can do early voting by mail. You can do early voting in person, and then you could also do um, voting in person on election day. So early voting by mail, that's a popular topic right now. Um, to be eligible to, to, read, to vote by mail, you have to be away from your, there's a couple different criteria you can meet. You can be away from your county on election day and during early voting. So, and that's popular, a popular reference to, or people call it um, absentee ballots. So if you're gonna be away from your county, uh, so, but you still wanna vote, they can, you can fill out this form and say, hey, I'm gonna be in Denver during voting season. So send me uh, the ballot by mail at this address in Denver and I'm gonna fill it out and then um, I'm gonna send it back to you guys in the mail. So there's that. Uh, you can be sick or have a, disability and you could or you could be 65 years of age or older or be confined in jail but are still eligible to vote um and i know that there's probably a lot of questions regarding that um so let me just say in terms of voting in terms of voting by mail um the deadline to apply for that is october 23rd so it's coming up pretty soon um, if you are wanting to do that and you have not filled out your application yet i encourage you to do so right away um, also, there's been a lot of back and forth uh, about who can vote by mail, who cannot vote by mail, what's the eligibility process, and I will tell you, it's the same as it's always been. The eligibility guidelines have not changed, um, and if you feel as though um, you're unsure about your disability status, um, you can call us and we'll let you know. Basically, it all falls back to the Texas Elections Code and it basically states off the top of my head, um, if you are sick or have a physical impairment that prevents you from entering the polling site um, and causing harm to you, then, then you can vote by mail. So um, I have people ask me about, you know, I have this, you know, I have diabetes, can I vote by mail? Because I'm concerned about leaving due to um, the pandemic that's going on. And it, since it is a, we feel at Disability Rights Texas, if, if you have a disability and it is going to the polling site is going to threaten your health or your safety, then, then you can consider voting by mail. Um, I will let you know that it is not the job, you do not, when you apply, excuse me, when applying for ballot by mail, you do not have to prove your disability. You do not have to provide any documentation verifying that disability. Um, and then also it is not the job of the county election official to, to verify your disability or, or um, you know, to decide if it's true or false. It is their job to process the paperwork. Um, and so make sure that you fill out all the boxes you're supposed to fill out and sign all the spots you're supposed to sign and then process the paperwork so you get your ballot. Um, oh yeah, and so here's the disability uh, definition. It is a sickness or physical condition that prevents a voter from appearing um, 
at the polling place on election day without a likelihood of needing personal assistance or injuring the voters health. So if you feel like you fall under those guidelines, then you can certainly certainly apply by mail or ballot by mail. Um, and this talks about the position we've taken. There's also early voting in person. Um, we obviously, um, there, it's, it's a popular thing to do. A lot of people are turning out and that's amazing. Um, I think the closer we get to election day, the more popular or the more people are gonna wanna vote. So I would encourage you to um, vote as soon as you can. And if you can avoid election day, that would probably be best because uh, I think it's going to be really busy on that day. Um, and then throughout the state of Texas, during early voting, you can vote anywhere in your, at any polling site in your county. So um, you don't have to show just, you don't, do not have to arrive at your designated precinct to vote on election day. Mm -hmm. You can vote anywhere in the county. Um, obviously, uh, early voting has been extent, has been expanded. Uh, it started yesterday and uh, it goes to October 30th. Usually early voting is only two weeks. We've, we've had uh, the exciting addition of a couple extra days to vote. So take advantage of that. I think it provides more time to really plan out what you're gonna do and what you're gonna vote and how you're gonna do it. So let's say you're gonna go, you wanna vote in person. Um, there's know that there's a couple different accommodations you are eligible for if you have a disability and that you can access. Um, so you have the right to have an assistant or bring in a, some, an assistant with you to go vote. You have the right to choose an assistant. Um, so if, you need, if you're gonna go vote and you need someone to help you out, um, it can be anyone of your choosing. It could be a poll worker if you would like, or it could be anybody uh, from your own life that you would like to help you, it, as long as it is not your union representative or your boss from your job, basically. At every polling site in the state of Texas, there should also be at least one accessible voting machine. Um, and that voting machine has, um, what makes it accessible is that it sits lower to the ground. So if you are in a mobility assistance device, um, this lower setting will make it uh, a more eye-to-eye -eye contact with the screen. Um, it'll be easier to reach the screen to mark the buttons or to mark your ballot, um, and it's just easier to reach and easier to see. Um, it also has different tools that are available. Uh, it has a sip and puff device uh, that you can plug into the machine if that's something that you use. It has earphones, which provides an audio description uh, reading of what the ballot says. So um, if you have some sort of visual impairment or you just do better with uh, having the ballot read to you rather than reading it, that is available to you. Um, there's also, there should be kind of like a remote that extends out from the voting machine. So if you cannot um, mark your ballot on the screen or the buttons on the machine, this remote extends out and it will help you mark your ballot through there. Um, there is also, real quick about that, there should be at least one accessible voting machine um, and it should be turned on and poll workers should know how to use it. If they don't or they will not let you use that machine and it appears to be available, let us know at the hotline and we'll see what we can do to help you fix that. Um, poll workers should be trained on how to use these machines so, you know, they're should not be an excuse as to why it's not being used. Also, if you vote in person, the other option, the other accommodation option for you is curbside voting. And that is available to every polling site in the state of Texas. Um, and it exists to assist voters with disabilities if they cannot physically access the polling site. Um, if they can't get into it because the polling site isn't accessible, you can bring the machine out to you to vote. So basically I tell people, um, you'll pull up to, you know, a parking spot or a designated ex curbside parking spot. Um, you will um, get a spot in line, basically. So you'll have like this virtual spot in line. And when your spot comes up, the election staff will come out and bring the ballot to you. You can mark your ballot um, on the machine and cast your ballot that way. And then when you're done, 
the election workers will take the machine and you can go on your way. It's just, this is, if it's hard for you to enter into the building, this is a way that the ballot can be brought out to you. Um, also, you have the right to have a physically accessible polling place. Um, and if you don't, let me know and we can work on that with the county and I'll, what I'll probably end up doing is going to inspect it and recommend um, making fixes or just finding a new polling site. Um, know that in, this, in every polling site must be accessible and if it's not, it has to be fixed or it must be relocated to a more accessible location. Um, there's also the notice of voting order. So if you've heard um, people talking about how someone with a disability can get moved to the front of the line, um, that's what this is. So it allows a voter with a disability and their helper to request to move ahead of the voters in line. So if you can't stand up for long periods of time um, or, or your disability prevents you from, from mm -hmm. waiting in the line for a certain amount of time, um, you can ask the precinct judge if you can be moved to the front of the line. Now the precinct judge has the right to say yes or no. They can move you to the front of the line, that's amazing. If they choose not to move you to the front of the line, you still have the right to have your spot held in line while you go sit down in a chair, if you need to sit down. So there is that. Um, we kind of talked about curbside voting some. Let's see if there's anything new, any new information. Um, obviously, curbside voting is available during early voting and election day. Um, we always recommend, in a perfect world, what's supposed to happen with curbside voting is there's a designated spot at your polling site. You drive up, uh, you can hit a button, and a ballot will be, you know, an election worker will come out to you, and, a, and, and the ballot will be, you know, brought out to you when it's time. We don't live in a perfect world, unfortunately, although I'm working on it, so bear with me. Um, what we recommend for individuals to do just to, to make sure all their bases are covered is we recommend contacting your county elections office if you plan on curbside voting. We recommend contacting your um, county elections office and letting them know that you plan on arriving at we'll just say Disability Rights Texas. Uh, you're gonna show up to vote at Disability Rights Texas and you're gonna be there at 11 o'clock on Friday and you're gonna be in a red car. Um, so they should, you know, send a ballot out to you at that time. Um, tell them how you're gonna go vote, when you're gonna go vote, and then what's gonna happen is the county elections office will contact the polling site to give them kind of essentially you're making a date to go vote via curbside. That way the polling site workers will, you know, keep an eye out for you and um, you don't have to wait around forever. Let's see. Um, right to assistance. I feel like we did that. Let's see if there's anything that we didn't cover. Um, just know the eligibility for that to receiving assistance is that a person who cannot cast a ballot independently because they cannot read or write or have a disability that prevents them from reading or marking the ballot uh, can get assistance from the person of their choice or an election worker. Um, know that your assistant um, will have to sign an affidavit saying that they're gonna help you and they're not gonna influence your vote in any way, that they are going to help you mark the ballot in the way that you want to. So your assistant can read the ballot to you. Um, they can direct the voter or you how to, to read the ballot. Um, they can mark it to you. Um, excuse me, they can read the ballot to you. They can kind of prompt you on where you need to read on your ballot. Um, they can mark the ballot for you and they can also direct you on how, like where to mark your ballot. What they cannot do is uh, basically say that let's say I'm going to be Heather's assistant. What can't be done is I can't tell Heather, you're, this is who you're going to vote for, this is how you're going to do it, and um, I don't really care about what your opinion is. If Heather expresses to me that she wants to vote uh, for whatever candidate, then that is how the ballot must be marked and not the way that I want it to be marked. Voting dates, those are important. As you know, early voting has started. Um, so, you know, 
go get them. I would say if know that if you wanted to register to vote in the November election and you have not already done so, that opportunity has come and gone. Um, the deadline to register to vote for the November elections was October 5th. You can still register to vote, um, but you will not be able to vote in this presidential election. Early voting started, it will go on until October 30th, and then election day is on November 3rd. Um, the deadline to return your ballot by mail is November 3rd. So the office, the elections office must receive it by November 3rd at 7 p.m. So uh, it doesn't need to be postmarked by the then, it needs to be received by the elections office at that time. So um, next steps, you kind of got all your information. What do you do now? You've registered. You know how, you know, you know your accommodations that are available. Um, I encourage you to get informed about what you want to vote for. This is your opportunity to learn about what you think is important to you, um, learn more information about it. Uh, you can learn about the candidates uh, and if they are promoting ideas that reflect what you're interested in. Um, you can find this information by going to a library, um, going online and visiting candidate websites, um, reading a newspaper if you're an old lady like me and that's something that you still do. Talk to your friends and family, see what they think. Um, and there you go, there's a lot of different options. And if all else fails, I always say, go to your local library and ask your librarian to help you out because um, they'll help guide you in the right direction of where to get information. You can also watch the candidate debates if, uh, as long as they get better than the last one. Um, so that's an option as well. I also encourage people to check out their local League of Women Voters. Um, the League of Women Voters puts out a voter guide uh, for every election and it's amazing. It gives you um, a rundown of what's on the ballot. It explains it to you in non-political language so it's easy to understand and oftentimes it will also provide candidate interviews um, so you can figure out who you want to vote for as well. Make a voting plan. Um, let me see if that's, yeah. Oh, and you also want to, you know, help others stay informed and vote. You got all this down. I would encourage you to make a plan. That's an important part of this process. Um, no, are you registered to vote? Cool, great. Um, how are you gonna vote? Are you gonna vote in person? Um, or are you gonna vote in ma by mail? If you voted by mail, have you filled out your application, excuse me, have you filled out your application for ballot by mail? Have you turned it in? If you're gonna vote in person, um, are you gonna vote on election day or are you gonna do it during early voting? What day will you vote? What time do you wanna go vote? Do you know where you're gonna go vote? What polling site you're gonna to go to? So once you figure that out, it's time to figure out how are you going to get there? Um, do you need a ride? Is it on a bus route? Uh, can you get yourself there? When you go vote, are you, do you, kind of, you have all the information you need? Do you need to bring a sample ballot or cheat sheet with you, which you can do? Um, do you need an assistant or do you need assistance? If you do, who are you going to use? Um, how, what kind of assistance are you going to receive? If no, cool. Do you need an accommodation of some sort? Yes or no, and what would that be? And then um, what can you bring with you to vote? You can bring a, like I said before, um, you can bring a cheat sheet um, that kind of tells you, I do that all the time. Um, it helps remind me of who I'm going to vote for and if I'm going to vote yes or no on certain things. Um, and if you have a service animal, you can bring your service animal. Uh, you can bring your kids with you to vote if, if you need to do that. That is allowed. Um, you just cannot bring a recording device, an active recording device in with you to the polling site. You'll see a lot of signs when you go vote that says turn off your cell phones. That's because it's a recording device. So you cannot take selfies in the voting booth. Don't do that. You can take selfies outside, but not while voting. Um, some people have gotten in trouble for that. So that's basically it. That's voting 101 in a, in a snapshot. Um, as always, if questions arise, I, we can totally talk about them right now. Um, or also, I encourage individuals to call our voter rights hotline. Um, 
that is available right now. It's going to be open as long as the polls are open. So from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Um, and we're here to answer your questions. If it does not, if we don't pick up, please leave a message. We'll get to you as quick as we can because it's myself and a coworker handling all these phone calls. So sometimes it gets a, we get a little sidetracked with calls we're actually on. Um, but our phone number for that is 1-888-796-8683 or, or vote. Um, and we have a web page. I encourage you to check that out. There's a lot of great information on, on voting rights as well. So um, there you go. And I'm, I'm, I'm all yours now. What do you got? It's awesome. It's awesome. Well, I, I got to say, I love the idea of the um, bringing the cheat sheet yeah. and making the plan. Um, two things that I still need to do. So I, that, that really um, opened my eyes. And, and I learned, I've learned a lot that I didn't know. So I, I really, really appreciate it. We, we had a couple of questions come through, but you answered the questions. Um, oh. So yeah, <laughs> you already answered the questions. One was uh, if somebody could read a ballot for somebody else. Yes. And so I think you answered that with, um, you, you could either get the election official or whoever's with you to do that. Correct. As long as it's not um, coerced in any way. Correct. Okay. And I think sometimes, it, um, poll workers may get a little confused um but it is within every right that you have for someone to read the ballot to you um and sometimes what is this what look what is actual assistance and what looks like trying to coerce somebody are very similar looking um but we are trying to explain that to individ to counties and and poll workers but just if they're giving you a hard time, just give us a call and we'll try to help out. But otherwise, you know, yes, they can read you the ballot. They can mark the ballot for you um, or they can prompt or kind of remind you about, you remember how we talked about this and you decided you were going to vote this way. They can do prompts like that as well. Awesome. Awesome. So we, we don't have any other questions. So it, is there any anything else that you wanna share or, you know, actually I do have one question because yes. you had mentioned just as far as COVID and, and san, sanitizing. So what 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 is happening at the polls as far as you know? Is there is there like a standard that the polls have to, to, to follow to keep yeah, things so clean? From what I, what I've understand and I've, you know, what I've seen happening is, um, the social distance, um, social distancing is happening. Um, you are encouraged to wear masks and any kind of personal protective gear that you feel comfortable with doing. Um, there are, they clean, they, um, some counties are, when it comes time to sign your name to when you're signing in to vote or when you're saying, yes, I am who I am, um, you can do so electronically or if you do so with like a pencil or a pen, you, it's like a one-time use and you can keep the pencil or whatever. Um, you can then also mark your ballot if it's on a screen. Uh, they may have styluses you can use or like pencils um, that you can mark the screen with so you don't have to touch it. Um, also, poll workers are cleaning down these machines and everything that's being touched constantly. Um, and then I know a lot of polling sites are getting cleaned on a daily basis. Um, as it currently stands, um, the governor has said, you do not have to wear a face mask when going to vote, but you are certainly welcome to at the same time. Um, there's been some concern about that. And I will say the reason behind that is that you cannot be turned away to vote for any reason. You cannot be turned away to, to cast your ballot in any way. So if you're not wearing a face mask, they cannot allow you the right to vote. Um, they can, like I know in Travis County, they're like, we're going to try to, you know, have everybody keep their distance from you, but you can still vote if you can't wear a face mask for whatever reason. If you go to a ballot, if you go to a polling site and you find that you're like, oh crap, I forgot my face mask. A lot of places will be for providing one and there's going to be tons of hand sanitizer everywhere. Um, and, and I know the poll workers I've seen, they are garbed up. They're wearing gloves, they're wearing face masks, they're wearing the face shields. Um, so they're trying to take every precaution possible. Also, I'll say this, 
Um, I've had a lot of people ask me like, let's say I had a call the other day and it was like, oh, I did not sign up to get my ballot by mail. I was planning on voting in person, but I, I'm sick or I need, to, I need to quarantine now because of whatever reason. Um, but I still want to vote. Is there a way I can do that? And I would encourage you to do curbside at that point because you can still, you're st still going to be able to vote, but you don't have to um, interact with as many people or stand outside. So good. Yeah. Good suggestion. That's a, that's a possible suggestion. Or if you find yourself quarantined and you just can't leave the house, um, there is something called late ballot by mail or late ballot by disability vote. And so before the pandemic, this option existed. So if you found yourself in the hospital, it was an unplanned visit and it's during early voting and election day and you're like, crap, I'm in the hospital. I'm not gonna leave anytime soon, but I still wanna cast my vote. Um, there was a form that your doctor could fill out that you and your doctor could fill out saying, I'm the doctor, I say that Molly can't leave this hospital to go vote. Um, and then I would sign it. I give that, I choose like a third party. I would give that paperwork to a third party. The third party could go to the county elections office, um, get my ballot, bring it back to me. I would fill out the ballot and then that third party would go and deliver the ballot again to the county elections office. Um, and I think that that is also now applicable for quarantine, as long as a, you have a doctor who's willing to say they can't leave their house under my orders. Um, so there is that as well. Um, I know there's a lot of questions about hand delivering versus mail, uh, turning in your ballot via mail. Um, so if I can cover that real quick, let me say Please. that um, if you are choosing to deliver, if you're choosing to hand deliver your ballot by mail to the elections office, um, know that you have to be the person to do it. It cannot be anybody else. And when you turn it in, you have to have proof of ID. So you bring your state ID um, to, you know, or let's say if you have any of the seven approved forms of ID, bring one of those to verify your identification or that you are who you say you are. Um, and that you must be the one to, to drop it off, not anybody else. If you um, want to visit the drop boxes, the one drop box in your county, um, you are welcome to do that as well. You still have to do the same procedure of showing an ID to verify your identity, um, but that is there. Awesome. All right. Well, we didn't have any additional questions come through, Molly. So um, I, I really appreciate your time this morning. I know you're doing double duty. Yeah, um, I'm going to go jump back onto the polling site. Um, yeah. I'm monitoring that stuff, but... Uh, it's that's part of what we do. It's it's uh it you know it's crazy but it's fun and it's awesome. It's I'm a nerd about the voting <laughs> stuff, which is why I have this job. So that's right. Well, we appreciate you. And um, just a reminder to the attendees that we're going to send a link to the presentation. Um, we'll also send a, a copy of the PowerPoint and and Molly's uh, contact information one eight hundred number. So you'll have all that information. Um, and also. Real quick, oh, sorry. Yeah, I want. I know that Jeff's contact information is on this slide. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay, we but we'll send with, yours. <laughs> yeah, well, and we operate with the same brain basically. Yeah. So if you can get hold of him, he'll get hold of me, and it's like Got the it. same person. So in the same place. Yep. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. Yeah, and we'll, we're also going to send a survey along to you all, the attendees. So uh, we want to know what additional um webinars that you'd like to to hear or, or the different topics that you'd like to hear so please please fill that out and we just want to thank again our uh, local authority ACOG who did sponsor this session today um, and just a final go vote it matters yeah. all right all right we all have a vote. exactly exactly yeah. So everybody have a fabulous day and um, enjoy the cold front that's coming through. <laughs> Friday. <laughs> All right. Take care. Thank you.